All right, guys, we are talking neuro-linguistic programming on the show today. My guest is John James Santangelo. He is so awesome. He's been doing this for a hot minute. He's got nine books. The ninth one's on the way. Um, And let me tell you a little bit about him. He is a PhD, an expert in behavioral change work, a clinical hypnotherapist, NLP trainer and the author of eight books, almost nine. He is founder and head trainer of Los Angeles's premier NLP training center, which is just called LA NLP. Um, And he is dedicated to helping people unleash their natural capability. I love that. Clarify their goals and overcome their mental roadblocks so they can produce outstanding results. We're getting all into what NLP is, um, behavior change. You'll hear many of the books that I probably reference a lot on the show that he's talking about, you know, um, from things he learned from Brian Tracy to Wayne Dyer to Eckhart Tolle to, you know, we're getting all into what is the psychology underneath of us that's causing us to get the results that we're getting in our life and how do we shift that? And so just an excellent conversation. I hope you guys enjoy. Here is John James Santangelo. All right. So John, I was telling you, we're going to need a NLP for <laughs> dummies here. So can you explain what NLP is to somebody who, you know, I'm not certified in NLP and some of my people may have never heard of it. Maybe they are certified, maybe they haven't, but can you break down what is NLP? Yeah. Thank God we got a good 45 minutes because it take about 44 <laughs> to explain it. You know, my mom still doesn't know what I do for a living. She was what, what is that? So <laughs> NLP was really developed back in the seventies from, watching three of the best therapists back then and Richard Bandler and Dr. John Grinder took what they were doing and they basically distilled it down to simple components like a recipe and that's kind of really what it is right neuro n stands for neuro the mind and up until about the 50s and you know this already the Medical, medical medical association didn't recognize the fact that there was a difference in the mind and the body and then Deepak Chopra came along, one of the famous endocrinologists back then, and said, look, at there's some there's the mind-body connection, because what the mind thinks, the body feels, and what the body feels, the mind thinks. And so the, it, the neuro part is really the connection between what we think and how the body responds. And then the L is for language. And this is the easy part, because we all talk to ourselves, right? We all have that internal dialogue going on, whether it be negative or positive, and also how we communicate with other people. And the P is for programming. And basically, I just said it, it's the recipes or the strategies or the habits that we run to produce the results that we do on a daily basis. I mean, that's the basic definition of it, right? So it's how we talk to ourselves and communicate with other people to produce the results that we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know NLP is very common with like sales teams, right? And And it goes much deeper than that. Yeah. And I, I considered doing it many times because I'm like, well, that sounds like a very useful tool in your tool belt for coaches, right? right, right to right. be able to. And so can you talk about some of the applications? I mean, you've done some cool stuff. I definitely want to ask you about <laughs> uh, post 9-11 as head trainer teaching yeah. light detection skills. Like, wow. Like, I mean, there's a lot of applications here. So can you talk yeah. about some of those? Yeah. Well, well, think about this. I was just on this other podcast and we were talking about the applications of NLP. We, we all use NLP daily. It's not like you don't know what it is. <clears throat> it's just called something else. So, for example, back in 1906, there was a gentleman called, um, oh my God, I just I had a brain fart. We talk about triggers or anchors and a lot of pa- Pavlov, Ivan Pavlov. He did the dogs, the dog study. He'd feed the dogs and he'd ring a bell. He'd feed the dogs, he'd ring a bell. After a while, he just rang the bell and the dogs would begin to salivate. Well, it's kind of the same thing that we do throughout the day. You drive in your car, you look in the rear view mirror, and you see flashing red lights. Oh, that puts you in a certain state of mind, right? Mm-hmm. You're listening to the radio and you hear your favorite song. Oh, that puts you in a certain state of mind. In NLP, we call those anchors or triggers. Mm-hmm. Well, we can create those triggers. We can create like peak performance and, and sports athletes use anchors all the time, right? Mm-hmm. They say something to themselves. They see something in their world. They use a certain body movement. A lot of athletes do this, use body movements. Uh, I was teaching sports psychology for a while. Every every uh, every golfer uses the same exact strategy to address the ball. It takes maybe one or two minutes to get up to the ball. That's an anchor or a trigger. And then boom, the ball goes off. When they set their mind straight, when they set their body and mind in motion, then the habit becomes simplistic. It's automatic. We have all these automatic programs that we have, right? Recipes. How do you bake a cake? 
It's easier if you have a recipe. You could do it on your own, but the cake's probably not going to come out real well. Right. Once you have a recipe and you can follow that recipe in NLP, we call it modeling, modeling success. Like, you know, you've you've learned what you do from modeling other people. And you hopefully you work with the best and you take golden nuggets out of what they do and you put it together and you build this arsenal of I mean, I love your website. If we're going to talk about you for a second, your website goes through Thanks. every aspect of nutrition and biohacking and meditation and visualization, the retreats that you run. I loved what you did. Thanks. So we can yeah. use that for every aspect. Lawyers use it. Real estate agents use it for sales techniques. I have teachers that come in. I have, you know, I have, um, I have coaches that come in because NLP is a great, as you were saying, tool to help people teach clients to get out of their own way. It's mm-hmm. kind of like what I say. Napoleon Hill wrote a book, 1936, called Think and Grow Rich. And he said, first, first element is desire, knowing what you want, have a burning white heat of desire. And the second piece of success is really learning to get out of your own way. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what you and I do as, as coaches, mm-hmm. right? Help look at anybody and people come to you and they say this, oh, I just don't know what to eat. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Eating is simple. If you, if you're, if you're committed and you're disciplined, just eat right. Mm-hmm. You can eat garbage once in a while. I used to train with Mr. Universe and Mr. American. My God, on Sundays when they were in between trainings, their Sunday would, you know, they would have, you know, two gallons of ice cream and, you know, M&Ms on top. And, 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 and you know, they, they got to blow off steam once in a while, right? So you learn these little habits and strategies that you build in to produce the results that you want on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I love I, the reason I've considered NLP so many times is that I love the biology of belief by Dr. Bruce yeah. Lipton, oh, right? God, Which is amazing. so, yeah. so much of what you're talking about with that. Yeah. The body is just following the mind, you That's know? Yep. <laughs> and then in terms of habit breaking, I think this might be, uh, Willpower is not the way I can't remember which book this was in, but it, he was talking right. about how he would like Robert hide, Green. yeah, hide the TV remote in a inaccessible place to get himself yeah. to stop watching it, you know, that kind of stuff. So, would you say NLP is about creating new triggers to get you to do different behaviors? Absolutely. Versus absolutely. Okay. I mean, look, think about it this way. It, it, again, it's it's just a recipe, a strategy, as we call it. NLP is a, is a recipe. So. Mm. We teach people, like, let's use fitness, for example. What does it take for somebody to get out of bed, if that's their deal? They, some people get dressed in the morning and go to the gym. I can't do morning workouts. I've got to do late. I used to train at night, 11 o'clock till midnight. It was crazy. <laughs> but everybody's got their own recipe, right? So what does mm-hmm. it take for somebody to get motivated to get right. off their butt, right. which is our biggest challenge, right, is to get them to the gym because once they're there, it's right. easy to follow along, you know, a simple recipe of, right. of working out. So we dig a little bit deeper, as you were saying, into the psychology of what they're doing, but what works best for you. I, I I don't I don't like the fact that people want to do negative things like that, like hide the remote. If you yeah, yeah. hide the remote, you're in trouble. <laughs> right. 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 It's like saying hide the alcohol bottle so I won't drink. Right. You'll go to the store and buy it. I mean, if you're not motivated, you'll find a way. What's the same thing Mm -hmm. with with results? If Mm -hmm. you want it bad enough, you'll find a way. And so we Mm -hmm. just give them, we try to build in strategies for them. Yeah. Physical strategies, mental strategies, especially belief strategies, which you know is so Mm -hmm. important. Mm. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like one of my, for me personally, I don't subscribe to the no sugar March thing. I'm like, that's not it. Like, yeah. and if anything, you're probably going to eat it, want it 10 <laughs> times more than you <laughs> even normally would because you're doing this thing instead, or, or people with uh, food allergies too. I'm yeah. like, you got to get out of the, like, I can't have gluten thing. Right. D- right. That it just start thinking oh about all the foods that you do love that right. just happen to not have gluten gluten in them. Oh, I can't wait to make that sweet potato cinnamon thing. I love with the (laughs) eggs and the the avocado. That sounds so good. You just forget about it. You're going to be my new fitness coach because that's exactly (laughs) what I would do. Right. right? Don't, don't, one of the things I, I, we say in NLP is the unconscious mind, which runs 90% of us and it's all unconscious. We don't do things Mm -hmm. Consciously, like you're not brushing your teeth consciously. One of the things I ask my students, tell me exactly right now how to tie your shoe. <laughs> they can't because they got right. Wait, I don't, it's so unconscious now. Right. You don't have to do it anymore. 
or right. driving your car before, you know, you were learning was like Ted and two and looking in the mirrors and you can't, God forbid the radio be on somebody talking to you at the same time. Now you could be putting on makeup, the radio on somebody's talking to you at the same time. You could probably listen to a podcast, just all right. drive because it becomes automatic. Right. And that's how we want to build in habits within ourselves. So if you know what those, let's say, ingredients are of the recipe, then we stack them and then rehearse them. And, uh, you know, it's like working out. You rehearse until your form's perfect. And then mm-hmm. after a while, that, the habit becomes automatic. Not, it's not brain surgery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really isn't. The unfortunate thing is that we're never taught this. <laughs> Yeah. 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 It's a, uh, you know, you, I just was doing, I've been on a big, like Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipton and all the run with my clients lately on our coaching calls. So we've been talking a lot about this kind of stuff and, yeah. you know, I did the old cross your arms. Okay. Cross them the other way. Right. Uh, and it's know. like, of course you would, if you were like, okay, for the rest of my life, I just really want to start having my other hand on top. Like right. it would take so much repetition yes. to get that. And you would forget yes. sometimes and yep. you would go back in old patterns and you have to have this yep. really conscious focus. So I guess my question is how does NLP, where does that come into the mix? You know, like, let's say some, let's use our crossing arms example or any other one you want to give, where does NLP come in to help with creating those new patterns and, and behavior change? Good question. So it really is. The question is, how do I change that? That's the question. Yeah. And how does NLP help with that? So the first question is, what is that? Right. That's the first thing we ask. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. People have to be able to define the problem. Like, I don't eat right. Okay. So what's the problem with not eating right? Right. Mm-hmm. You take a little bit mm-hmm. deeper and start un- uncovering, as we call it, the onion, the layers till you get to the core of really the the, the root motivation of why they're doing that negative behavior. Because mm-hmm. here's, the, here's the thing, as Dr. Phil even says, we don't do behaviors just out of random context. We do them because we're getting something out of them. For sure. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of people don't understand that. Oh, I don't want to do that. Then why are you doing it? Well, I'm not doing it. It's a habit. Well, you're right. doing it. And you've right. chosen to do it because you've developed that habit. And now you keep doing it and doing it over and over again. And it's rote now. It's mm-hmm. automatic. So mm-hmm. the question is then, what's the problem? And then the antithesis of that, and I say, what's the flip side of that coin? What do you want instead? Yeah. You've got to find out what the opposite is. Right. Because that's probably what you want is the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. Right. And we define that because I believe in, and nice. you've probably experienced this too. Over 25 years of doing this, you know, I was trained by the same people that t- t- trained Tony Robbins. And we, we figure this system out of success. It's really stupid simple. It's <laughs> knowing what you want, real clear about it, and then mm-hmm. learning to get out of your own way. Right. And that's it. That's all it is. The unfortunate thing is, <clears throat> as you were saying before, is master your emotions, master your life. We got so much self dialogue in our heads that's right. telling us you can't do that. You'll never right. be that set point weight. You're too fat. You don't look right. good in shorts. You don't make enough money. You can't afford it. You're no good. You'll never find the perfect relationship. All that's going off in our head. Mm-hmm. And we've got to quiet those voices. So the first thing that I do is decide, we figure out what the problem is, what do you want? And then we start building out a map or a model of what it is that you need to do to get to where you need to be. And that's where you focus on. Because in NLP, we say three things, focus, meaning, action. What you focus on is going to produce a meaning. Mm. And through that meaning, you're going to act or behave or produce results. So I'll give you an example. If if I just got dumped last night by by my wife or my girlfriend or whatever, not that I have two of them, <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> I'm just saying to anybody out there, your spouse or your partner, or whatever, if that's what you're focusing on all day long today, what does that mean to you? Oh, I'm no good. Mm-hmm. I couldn't communicate mm-hmm. properly. What actions then do you take based on that meaning? which are probably going to be negative, right? You're probably going to feel, you know, depressed, anxiety. You're probably going to make a thousand calls to them and hang up at the last minute. You know, you're going to do things and tell people, oh, it was all her. She just did a heat, blah, blah, blah. So focus, meaning, action. Mm -hmm. So what you focus on produces a meaning is one of the things Tony just came out and started saying is your life, the quality of your life is determined by the meaning that you place on what you focus on. Because the meaning is going to give you the behavior or the results or the path that you're going to take. Mm, I love so this. It's, it's, it's not focusing on what doesn't work, 
Right. right? Here, here's one of the things I ask my clients. First thing, let's pretend I'm your travel agent. What's the first question I'm going to ask you? Where do you want to go? Right? Real right. simple. But here's what they do. Oh, God. You know, I've been in New York, and New York is just so dirty now, and it's a problem. I love <laughs> Seattle. It's beautiful. Seattle's beautiful, and, the, you know, the Space Needle. But, you know, the homeless there is a real problem, and it rains all the time. Like, I get, get, no, I get it. I get it. Where do you want to go? Oh, 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 oh. Right. I'd love to go to New York, but there's just so many problems they're having right now. The war over in Ukraine. They know what they don't want. Right. But they can't tell you what they want. And yep. until you have that, the mm -hmm. unconscious mind, which runs 90% of us, is going to focus on what you don't want. And that's what you keep getting daily is yep. what you don't want. It's not brain surgery. Mm -hmm. It's simple focus. Here's something mm -hmm. I learned recently. I do live NLP practitioner training programs, 12 days, 10 hours a day with me. You get licensed as a practitioner after twelve, after six weekends, twelve week, twelve days, six weekends. I've learned, and, and you probably already know this because you're so smart. We only have three problems in life. Only three. Every one that you can give me is going to go under one of those categories. The first one's relationships. We start learning that at a very young age, 13, 12, 11. You start getting into a cute little relationship and you get dumped or you dump somebody else's and it becomes difficult after that. And so hopefully you get better. <laughs> hopefully you get better, right? The second one in about your 20s is money. You start learning, I need money. So you have to start working for it. You go get a job or you start a business. Then a lot of problems occur because of that. And then later on in life, it's one of the things that all the gurus said, you spend all your money trying to fix your health later on in life. And that becomes a major problem. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing, Tara, is we don't learn one of those three things in school. We're not taught about money. We're not taught about communication and relationships. And we're surely not taught about health. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. It really yeah. is. Oh, yeah. You know, we're not taught how to use our brain to get what we want. It's crazy. And health should be so simple. It really should be. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Eat well, right, eat right and walk. That's it. <laughs> if you want to. Get yeah. And then if you want to get deeper, it's like, look at like from for most people, at least, I mean, this is my experience. And a lot of people's experience is from school to religion. You're told that you can you can want certain things. <laughs> right. Or that you should want certain things. And so what happens as a result, you know, and I use this exercise a lot. And I'd say, it's, especially ladies, I'm sorry, I'm shouting you out. But like, especially women, like in their mom. Oh, and yeah. they're working and then I'm oh, like what, yeah. what do you just tell me one thing that you want and it's right. so often it's heartbreaking but it's like they're juggling um, right? I don't know I'm not really sure like uh yeah. like just anything that you like in your heart like it makes yeah. your heart sing you're like I want that and they're like um you know Tara you know what know. that is I can tell you this we're doing this a long time people come to us only for one reason when you when you drill it down to whatever it is they want or don't want, you get to the core, it's always self-worth. Mm. I don't feel I deserve it. Mm. That becomes the core of not having what they want. Mm. They can say it and they can mean it, mm -hmm. but they don't follow through because they don't feel worthy. It's true. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I'm writing a new book. This is my ninth book. I'm writing. Congratulations on your book. I loved your book. I, I read a lot of that. <laughs> Thank I, you. Nine you're books. Like, that's you're like so awesome. You're a machine. I don't know I how you didn't. <laughs> I don't know you how you did it. nine. Thank you. <laughs> so, I mean, look, at okay, this one I just finished discovering NLP is really about the basic introduction to NLP. I wrote this one about 10 years ago called Set, Setting Goals. Nice. And then we did one on hypnosis called Discovering Trance and about self-hypnosis, meditation, nice. and visualization. You know, people, people just come to us because they need that boost. They need that internal motivation. The next book I'm writing is called Mastering Unshakable Confidence. Mm. And I really thought about calling it this. I am not a robot. <laughs> right. Because if you were a robot, you'd think like Dr. Spock, right? That's all you would have was linear, logical decisions. Right. But that's, that's no fun. Right. There's no heart in that. Right. And then you can't be on the other side, which we know people, that's all they think about is their feelings and they never get anything done because as Dr. Wayne Dyer says, 
feelings are like clouds moving across the sky. They're just, they're going to come and go. Right. You can't depend on them. Right. So you have to find that balance in between right. of feeling the feelings, then deciding if the logic behind that is something that you need to do to take the next step. Right. Mm -hmm. But so many, I mean, uh, uh, so many people in the world right now, especially after COVID and stuff, they're locked, they've been locked up in their house and they're not sure of themselves anymore. And they're, they've got anxiety and worry. And it's just a simple process of really understanding what, as you were just saying, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want? Mm -hmm. And then you got to believe in it. You got to believe in yourself that you can have it. Mm -hmm. And then, and then who cares if you fall down, break your butt, tailbone, you're going to get back up. You do it again. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, I'd say the self worth thing. That's a really interesting topic to me in the entire personal development industry, right? Because I've noticed, I learned this for myself first, and then observing yeah. it through clients, I was just like, wow, like, I noticed that if I didn't actively do self worth work, like I could make oh, a yeah. lot of progress in my life yeah. and kind of be living in a different reality. Yeah. And then I would feel this kind of like, <laughs> wow, I don't think my self image or my self has like really caught up to this work that I'm doing. I need to like take a second and like feel this. This is where you, this is who you are. This is how you're operating in life. This feel that, like have that yeah. feeling of like, dude, yeah. This is where I'm at now. Like, yeah. damn, this feels yeah. good. Like, yes, you know? And I th I think that that is something that I don't hear it talked about a lot in the no. personal development industry is no. like having your self-image, your self-concept, yeah. your self-worth, yeah. like catch up to the work that you're doing. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? I'm going to be the first one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's so, it's so true. I think that one of the things that they say in any success book you've ever written is, is relish in the small successes, right? Mm -hmm. We don't take the time to go, oh my God, I ate an apple today. Yeah. It's like awesome. Right. You know, right. it's got to be, mm -hmm. ugh, I can't get, I can't lose 25 pounds. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, relish right. that until I get there. No. Right. You know, if you walk out the door to the gym, man, you should, my mom always used to say, you better pat yourself in the back because no one else is going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And you got to mm -hmm. relish in those small mm -hmm. things. Let me give you, I will give your listeners the most powerful exercise in the world. Mm. I promise yeah. you. It right. changed. It changed my life. It literally changed mm. my life. I learned it from the motivational speaker Brian Tracy. Nice. You do this for thirty seconds. If you can do it more, like I, used, I was doing it 20, 30 times a day. Sometimes standing in the middle of the grocery store, the line, the bank. All this is it right here. You build your self esteem. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. Three times. Mm. It's not an affirmation. It's an emotional instruction. Mm. Affirmations don't work because people go like this. I want more money. I want mm -hmm. more money. I want. I like to be skinny. I like to be skinny. It's not going to work. Your unconscious mind mm -hmm. is listening and there's no power behind it. Mm -hmm. You have to put power behind it. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I felt embarrassed saying it sometimes. People are watching. I didn't care. I was going after a goal. <laughs> if, if they don't, they think I'm nuts. I go, I am crazy. I'm crazy about myself. <laughs> right. I love who I am. I like myself. That's awesome. And, and the better you get at it, I promise you mm -hmm. that starts turning the old yep. belief of I'm not worthy. I'm not worth it. I can't afford it. I'm not, you know, I'm bad at relationships. It starts turning that around to, or at mm -hmm. least mm -hmm. it's possible now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You've got to practice this daily. Mm -hmm. I love that you're talking about getting into that emotional state. I, I, I just was uh, talking about this with gratitude. Like gratitude oh. is not a cognitive process. No. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my house. I'm grateful for my job. I'm great. Like, gratitude is a feeling. And it's the same yeah. thing with any of this stuff. Anything yeah. that we're talking yeah. about, it's it, the feeling. If the feeling isn't attached to it, it's, yep. it's, it's, dead. it's, it's yeah. dead. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example. Here's a, here's a question I ask my students. When you get up in the morning and you just open your eyes and you know you're awake, but you know you're in, still in that sleepy state, how do you know to be you? Mm. How do you know to be you? Hmm. I'm not going to let you mull over that. The answer is memories. Mm. Memories. That's it. That's right. the only reason we know right. to be you. Or if you had, like, if you saw Jason Bourne, right, the first movie, he had amnesia. Yeah. He didn't know who he was, so he chose something else other than what he was as an assassin because you don't know who you are. 
But here's the crazy thing. Like you were saying, every one of those memories are attached to an emotion. They have to be, or they're stuck in the background. We don't remember them. Because if I asked you, Tara, do you remember two weeks ago, Tuesday, brushing your teeth? Right. Of course not. No. But if you got a phone call right that moment and your friend said, oh my God, you hit the lotto. (laughs) Your emotion go through the roof. You'd never Mm -hmm. forget that moment. Or Mm -hmm. you got a fall. You got a call that's saying, you know, somebody just passed away, your best friend. You'd never forget that moment because it's attached. That memory is attached to an emotion. With NLP, we just take the emotion away from the event if it's a negative event. So Mm -hmm. the emotion is left there and you go, oh, that's not so bad anymore. We don't want to eliminate the, the event. We want to eliminate the emotion attached to the event. Hmm. So here's a great way that um, Tony, Tony Robbins describes this called priming. Have you heard of this? Mm, I don't think so. Great for your clients. Great. You, you just hit it on the head. You didn't even know what it was. When you wake up in the morning, first thing you should say is find three things you're grateful for. I'm grateful for that. I woke up this morning that I'm healthy. I'm grateful I have somebody loving that's laying next to me. I'm grateful that, you know, I have a job and I can provide for my friends and family, right? (laughs) Whatever that is different every morning. And the priming comes from this plan your day out Mm. in your head, exactly Mm. the way you want it to unfold in one minute, Mm. one minute. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You see yourself performing. If you have a meeting, if you have a task, Mm -hmm. you're going to go speak, you're going to go work out with you. See yourself doing all of that throughout the day. 24 hours in one minute, because here's what happens. We already know this from sports. Michael Jordan did this every game. Before every game, 45 minutes, he'd rehearse it in his head. Visualization. He'd rehearse 45 minutes, the shots he was going to take, the steals he was going to make, pounding the glass, the backboard, chasing his players. So his body already knew Mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing when we're priming our day. You, mm. Now your body and mind, because they're connected, go, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to feel that. I'm supposed to acknowledge that. It's mm. already set up in advance. Mm-hmm. You're setting up your day in your unconscious mind, which runs 90% of us mm-hmm. in advance to win. I love that. I'm not, I'm familiar with the concept, not with the word priming. So now priming. I know. Thank you. Yep. And I like this in one minute. Yep. You know, yes, and- that's not brain surgery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. A, a mindset coach friend of mine, and uh, he does that too. And he would, I mean, he would have every, his sounded like it took more than a minute. I don't know. Maybe he's really fast, but he is pretty <laughs> smart, but he, he would even like every little meeting he'd be like, and it's going to go, he would just like see their faces and the energy and then boom, next one faces energy, yep. you know, and yep. like go through those. So yeah, you can go deeper into it. Most people just don't have a half hour sitting there in bed, <laughs> you know, but yeah. I, I always recommend that if you're going to go into a meeting, take a minute outside the door before you grab the handle, throw your shoulders back, yeah. chin up, say, oh, I like myself. I am awesome. I'm going to rock this meeting. That's priming. Yeah. And then, you, then you walk in or, you know, before you work out, or, you know, you talk to Arnold Schwarzenegger in his books and his movies, Pumping Iron. That's all he talked about was mindset. Mm-hmm. Somebody mm-hmm. asked me the other day, I'm putting a new app together. I love your app, by the way. And they said, God, there's so much co- competition out there in apps. And I go, I'm like Arnold. He said, there is no competition. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that way. I'm like, right? it, it, it's this, uh, everything that I create is coming from my own yes. unique Your journey identity. and what I feel called yes. to share yes. in the, yeah. <laughs> right. Cause there could be a thousand people. I mean, you know, there's a thousand fitness trainers probably where you live. Well, maybe not in Hilo, <laughs> maybe too. That's why you moved there. Now you can capture the whole Island. But, you know, everybody's doing their thing and their, their twist right. on it. Tony, right. Tony took Tony took neuro linguistic programming, and he was paying the the original developers a royalty fee. So he changed the word to NAC, neuro associative conditioning, so he <laughs> could bypass all of that and make it his own. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, uh, you know, my little the I mean, not to. Uh, devalue the amazing thing that changed your life and coming from Brian, the great Brian Tracy, who I appreciate very much. But um, I have my own little version of that where I developed the pattern of like when I would see myself in the mirror, just washing my hands real quick or whatever, just real, I would just like look myself right in the eyes and I would smile and I would just say, you're beautiful. And then I would walk off and it always made me smile or giggle or laugh, but it was such a beautiful moment with myself yes. and then you know crush a workout of the gym like i started developing right. that me like good job that was yes. freaking awesome yeah. you know and just having proactively choosing positive self-talk yes. was completely 
like um reality shifting yeah. almost yeah. like it's to me a lot of um low vibe energy i'm not saying like clinical depression or stuff like that right, but just these right, kind of right. like yeah, yeah. lower moods uh, i think so much of that is from the being you have this like kind of meanie inside you all the time you're gonna feel yeah. a little down you know and yeah. you can proactively <laughs> push in the like awesome person to be around oh, by God, choice yeah. and then it's just your mood just starts to come up because it's nice to be with you yeah you know, so you know dr wayne dyer said it one day he was playing tennis with a friend and the guy hit a bad shot and he's like god i'm so stupid i can't believe i'm such an idiot he goes whoa 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 hold on <laughs> he goes would you accept me talking to you like that right why right. would you do it to yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's so important it really mm -hmm. is the first we have what in nlp we have what's called a communication model and it's real simple. We have all this information coming into our neurology, what mm -hmm. we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we smell. We make meaning of it and it builds a representation. Like if I said dog to you, you would have a different word and different meaning than somebody else. Right. I've said it before. And some women go, my ex-husband. Right? OK, whatever that <laughs> meaning is, then you behave from that. Right, because right. I want to go. Ee, I love doggies. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, you know, maybe you go adopt a dog or do whatever. Right. You know, my ex husband. No, oh, I'm never going to get in a relationship. So there's the, the the path is set from what we focus on and how we talk to ourselves. Yeah. And the fact that, as you were just saying before, some people don't really truly understand that. It it honestly it breaks my heart. Definitely. People come to me. They only come to us for one of two reasons. People are feeling feelings they don't want to feel. Mm. and they're doing behaviors they don't want to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And one of the things I say, people don't change unless the pain of remaining the same is greater than the pain of the change, which means they have to hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. They can't just have, I wish. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. should have. Mm -hmm. As Tony says, people just should all over themselves every day. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you're like, I should have done this. I should have done that. Mm -hmm. And they don't really make a commitment or decide what they want. Right. And that's the key because we're, we're your brain is going in all different directions and your feelings are taking you. Oh, that's the uh, nah, nah, nah. right. We, the lack we, of clarity. Yeah, I think it's I, you know, uh, so I do a one thing each week with my clients, like they commit on a call, like the, what's one thing that you want to do this week? Very, right. but right. It, it's been amazing to me over the years. Like people be like, I want to spend more time with my kids. I'm like, mm -hmm. That sounds so stressful. Like it's too foggy, you know. It's easy. It's it's I want to be. I want to be more present with my spouse. What does right. that mean? Right. Like that's so. Yeah. It's this oh foggy. But if you can go, I want to right. take my youngest out to ice cream after school on Friday. Right. Okay. Now yeah. we get the quality beef. time. Quality time. Right? <laughs> That's right. But the specifics is what I found is like, um, yeah. I'm not saying like every, you know, big, huge goal is like, we have to pigeonhole ourselves. No, 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 it has no, to be no. specifically yeah. like that. But yeah. on like the smaller incremental or at least like a starting point is like, yeah. you know, I want to impact people. Okay. Well, like let's get a <laughs> little more specific on that. Oh, like you mean with the hammer? How? Like, how work, <laughs> yeah. right? like, what does that mean? Right. The clear right. lack of clarity, I think, is very stressful that a lot of people live in. It's like, I just want to, you know, I get it all the time. I just want to feel better. Yes. Because what that does that comes, mean? Well, that comes from the negative programming <laughs> and the lack of self worth. I right. don't really define it because if I define it, I might have to do something about it. And I know mm -hmm. I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it will always come back to that. It will mm -hmm. always come back to, I can't start because I don't feel, and of course, you know, they're never going to say that up front. Well, yeah, I'd love to lose 10 pounds and work out every day. And, well, you know, I just don't have enough time, right? Right, right. I don't right. Have anybody to work out with. Right. I don't have enough money to buy the right food. Right. Those are all totally. just, you know, we call NLP, we call them reasons. They're excuses. That's all they right. are. Yeah. Uh, okay. So NLP, like this worthiness topic, like how does NLP, are you talking about maybe when you're like getting detaching emotions from events and you can kind of shape a new, how do you help with self-worth and NLP? I'm curious, well, or is that what, part of NLP? What I'm talking about the emotion and the event, that's more of a therapeutic model and takes uh -huh. a lot longer to go through, right? Okay. We sit them down, we go through timeline therapy or do some anchoring, collapsing it, all that. But for the mm -hmm. most part, 
as we come back, and I'll keep coming back to this over and over again, master your emotions, master your life, right? That, that's the key right there. That's the key. Mm. If you can learn to control, some people don't like that word. Well, what do you mean control? I don't, mm. Okay, manage, whatever manage. you want to call it. Yeah. You're still controlling what you focus on. Right. Right. That's really what it is. Most people have anxiety about the future and worry about the past. As, as, as mm-hmm. uh, Eckhart Tolle wrote in The Power of Now in his book, he says, there, our problems don't exist in the moment. Nothing but bliss exists right. in the moment. Yep. You can yep. think about a minute from now. Oh, I got to do that. There you go. You're outside of the moment. Exactly. Oh, the worry about the past. This ha- It's being present for what you want. It's teaching. And this is what, and we already know this. The unconscious mind is a seven-year-old. Mm-hmm. It acts and speaks to ourselves. It takes everything literally and personally, mm-hmm. literally and personally. So the unconscious mind, this is crazy. Some of you may have known this or not know this. The unconscious mind cannot think of a negative thought. Have you heard this? It yeah, cannot I have. process a negative thought. Right. So when I say to you, don't, whatever you do, mm-hmm. Tara, do not think of a blue tree. Right. You have to think about what you don't want to think about before you think about it. Think right. about it. <laughs> right. Which is why I don't like the no sugar month. It's just right. like, but no. So you say, you know, <laughs> as, a, as a PhD in clinical hypnotherapy, you know, clients come to us and they're like, I just want to stop smoking. We don't teach the client, don't smoke, don't right. smoke. Because all they're hearing, <laughs> the negation is the word don't, which is a contraction of two words, do and not. And all we hear is the is the process word, which is the smoke. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Or, or right. With your no, don't eat that food. Right. Don't eat sugar. Right. Don't eat crappy food. You shouldn't do this. All those are negations which the mind then focuses upon. It's crazy that yep. again that we're not taught this simple process of how to run our brain properly. I know. I know. It's so sad. Uh, and I use the same example. I'm like, if I would just randomly went up to my kid and was like you can't have gummy bears ever right. again. Like, right. it's just like, he wasn't even thinking about gummy <laughs> bears, but now all of a sudden, what does he want? Really freaking bad. I just made this huge thing out of nowhere versus I could just be like, Hey, we're going to, you know, have some dinner. Okay. But I just like threw in this no gummy bears. Yes. That's what we do to ourselves. You know, I, I, I have two, I have two <laughs> big dogs. I got a hundred pound Doberman and an 85 pound pit bull and they're walking around my office. <laughs> awesome. And it, it's it's kind of like we, we, we treat them the same. We don't say you want a treat because, again, what are they going to do? They're, all they're thinking about is a treat. And it comes right. as, as simplistic as this. When you eat dinner, and they know what the word dinner is. <laughs> they know what the word dinner means. Hey, out, little butthead. Hold on. <laughs> I don't mind them. <laughs> same thing. It's the same thing teaching our kids. What you show them, what you tell them, they're going to focus mm-hmm. on. That becomes their mission it's the same thing as adults we're just bigger seven-year-olds totally (laughs) i always think the same thing we don't we don't learn how to take control of our brain and run our brain properly Mm -hmm. focus on what you want let me give you another great exercise because people come to me this all with all time one of the things you may have said how do i get how do i get myself out of the stuck negative state right that's the Mm -hmm. that's the big question yeah well, what's the flip side of that coin first, right? So the thing is, is one of the things in NLP, we say, you've got to get the feeling out of your body first. You are making decisions which shape the quality of your life based upon the emotional states you're in while you're making the decision. Yeah. That's why I say never make a big decision while you're in a negative state because you're going to, if you, if you're in a negative state, you're going to make a negative decision. Right. You're in a passionate state. You're going to make it a passion. You're in a motivated totally. state. So you got to get the emotion out of the body first. So the easiest mm-hmm. way to do that, because the mind body is connected, is stand up or sit up straight, throw your shoulders back, change your physiology, yeah. put your chin up, take a huge deep breath. Nice. Let it out slowly. Now you're present. Yeah. Even if it's for a moment, if it comes back, do it again. Right. And then the most important part is to focus your attention on what you want. Ask yourself this simple question because questions ignite the unconscious mind. What 
do I want instead? Right. That presupposes the opposite of what we just were doing. Nice. Deep breath. Let it out slowly. What do I want instead? The unconscious mind loves you. That seven-year-old loves you so much. It's going to go, oh, oh, come oh, yes, let me give you the answer. Look, I'll give you multiple answers. Pick one. But when you go, why can't I lose this 10 ugly pounds? Your brain's going to go, well, first of all, you're lazy. Second of all, you don't eat right. Second of all, you, third, you don't exercise properly. Fourth of all, your negative self-talk. Oh, that's not the kind of answers I wanted. Ask more empowering questions. My first yeah. book is called Asking the Right Question. Mm. Aristotle said, asking the right question is half the answer. <laughs> yeah. Right? I love it. The ability to formulate that question gives your unconscious mind the power to achieve it. It's just that we're we're such a totally. – oh, my God. I'm, I'm feeling yucky right now even talking about this because it's just – it gets in you, right? And mm. people live in this negative state all the time. Yeah. You got to get that feeling out. And then what do I want instead? Develop that habit Mm. every moment of your life. I I don't have to think about it anymore. My brain just goes, what do I want instead? What do I want instead? And it starts moving me and looking and having me focus in that direction rather than over here in this negative state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was, because I used to be overweight, I've got four kids. And when I was going through that big transformation, I didn't know. I just thought I was playing mind. I just called them mind tricks. I had no background at all in anything. I never even read a hardly a mindset book in my life, but somehow I just figured that out. And I just kept like seeing myself visualizing and just reminding myself. I'm like, I'm, I'm super fit. I'm not actually, I'm actually really fit. I wasn't saying I'm trying to lose weight. (laughs) I'm like, I'm super fit. I'm super fit. I'm super. And it just, worked, you know, and that's the thing that like I see happen a lot, um, in, in, in people's journeys of business or health or whatever they don't like, or even illnesses. This is something like with like, I have hypothyroidism or I have, I just, I have those clients read the biology of belief. Yep. And then I'm like, we're not saying that anymore. Yeah, we're not no. going to keep oh, reaffirming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that I'm not negative, that, discounting that side, it. <laughs> you, said, you were saying before that it's that other side of you that's talking. And usually it's the, it's the part that doesn't believe you or believe in you. Right. You know, I, right. I wrote my very first book was on stress reduction. And I, I studied, I figured God, NLP is so strong. Hypnosis is so strong. The mind, and you know, this reading Bruce Lipton's book, he says the power of your beliefs can accomplish anything. We already know that we've done studies with schizophrenics, schizophrenics. Wow. And when they change personality, their eye color has changed. Hmm. They have gone from personality. This personality has diabetes. And this personality doesn't. They've taken blood samples when they've changed. That's how powerful beliefs are. Yeah. What are our beliefs? I'm not good enough. I can't make money. I don't have money. Right? Right. Yeah. It's worth a deep dive of taking a look at those and working through them. And I love your technique of just using breath work to get in the present so you can get out of that dysregulated state and then identify what you do want instead. It's really simple. That's a really powerful tip. Here's the thing. I want you to learn something from me today. When you start asking people about feelings, ask them where it's located in their body. I do do that because I've been working with somebody who's been doing that with me for like six years. <laughs> the difference between anxiety and excitement is two inches in the chest. <laughs> two inches. Nice. It's crazy. It's amazing what the body can do. It's amazing what the body can do. Yeah. Well, yeah. Again, we're not taught how to how to you know use the controllers. Mm-hmm. Right. We I watch, know. We watch. We watch other people, and they they don't know what they're doing. So don't follow your friend. I know. I know. It's <laughs> we need a a mindset like Tony Robbins needs to start a new school system. <laughs> yeah. That would be really great. <laughs> yeah. I know. When I first learned my first couple of weekends when I was learning this, I go, "Why aren't we teaching this in school? Right? Why are these three year olds and six year olds learning how to empower their own mind and take control of their body? This is ridiculous that." Our government or the world system is allowing people just to, you know, suppress. Well, we don't need mm-hmm. we don't need leaders. We need workers, right? So right. Not, they don't want to make work. They don't want to build up leaders. 
So right. that's, a whole, that's a whole nother issue. You know? I literally just showed a whole video on that to my kids last night. And yeah. I've, you know, that's why parents, we got to take into our own hands. I just show my yeah. kids like digestible mindset videos oh. on yeah. YouTube and, you know, yeah. we'll have a little yeah. discussion around it, but that's really it is like, but unfortunately yeah. most kids are not going to have that, you know? This and so dangerous things for kids <laughs> right now, it, yeah. it can be a tool, but they're not, they're not being fed. No good knowledge. Right. And they're, you know, if they're young enough, they're in that theta state all the time and they have no filter at all. And they're just like, this is reality, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will go ahead and wrap it up, even though it's been so fun. (laughs) It's been so awesome talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on. And I just want to make sure thank you you, that everybody knows that you have um, a free NLP mini course, correct? On the the website. Yeah. LANLP.com. Five letters, NL, like Los Angeles, L-A-N-L-P.com forward slash free. All right, guys, check that out. And of course, check out all of his books. John, thank you so much. I hope to end you sometime on our journeys. (laughs) Absolutely.